Hey, I'm Avery Brown, bowler at Louisiana Tech University, and I got next. You next up and you ain't been on sports like talk like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking it, you up next. Keep the wins so hard. Rock the star on the big scene, make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat, don't set up for less. They put you through that test, your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, first they go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Shoot. SLT Nation, welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next, a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right, amazing human beings doing amazing things and accomplishing big dreams. And Kev, we are breaking ground today. We are making Sports Life Talks. You got next history. We got the first bowler on the show i don't know how you do it kt but man the crowd need to go crazy right now because i promise you we setting trends we ain't set tripping hey check this out all the way live from the 318 Hey, is, is Rustin still in 318? Is, is, is Rustin still part of three? There it is. My my part, my stomping grounds. We go to Louisiana Tech, and I want to introduce y'all to the amazing, the beautiful, the talented, a strike ready to happen. We got Avery Brown in the building. How you doing, Avery? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing real good now. I, hey, I'm, I'm I'm so excited to have somebody from Tech on here. I think we've had a couple of people from Tech. I know we had a, a Tech football player in season one, so y'all go check out season one if you want to see that. But hey, I like it when we get the, we get the boot we get the boot up on this thing, man. All right, well listen, I am your host, the mouth of the South B. Jones, the Louisiana Mister Yeet himself, rocking alongside of my co-host, my brother from another mother, my partner in crime, the head coach KT. How you doing, Ken? I'm doing great, B. Jones. This whole Louisiana thing. Am I going to have to hear this on the whole show? Put your L's up. Put your L's up, ladies and gentlemen. Louisiana, we represent. Hey, check this out. But she from, hey, Kevin, I don't know how we doing this. I promise you, SLT Nation, this is not intentional. I know. Once again, Columbus, Ohio. Hey, I think we're going to have to relocate the show to Columbus, man. We're going to have to relocate the show out of DFW to Ohio. We get so much love. R.P. Jones, what we're going to have to do is find a streaming service in Ohio and try to throw these shows on there. I try to tell you, man. They been, y'all been showing us some super super love out there well check this out if this is your first time joining the show we first and foremost want to say thank you because you could have been anywhere in the world you chose to sit down and rock with us for 35 40 minutes and that means a ton to us but hey this is a great show 2022 has been amazing we got some phenomenal shows coming we've had some phenomenal shows in the past but we need your support to keep this amazing momentum going forward we need you on the count of three Columbus, Ohio, Ruston, Louisiana, even A State, Arkansas State. We went and saw y'all play basketball not too long ago. We need y'all to show us some love and smash that subscribe button. Avery, your folks ready? Y'all locked down? Yep. All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Ooh. I'm gonna let it sit out there like a Steph Curry three. I'm gonna let it sit out there for a little minute. Check this out. If you did smash that subscribe button, I can't tell you thank you enough. But check this out. Stick around. At the end of the show, we got some outstanding contests coming your way. Some ways for you to earn some SLT bread. And then on top of that, we got great content, ladies and gentlemen. Go check out season one of you got next. We got over 100 coaches, athletes, content creators, models, actors. It don't matter. We span in the globe and we are trying to find amazing people and uh like today's story so avery we see the rock in your hand what size ball that is in your hand in that picture that's a 15 pound ball Woo! but hey i'm not even finna tell on myself i'll be going in that bowling with an 11 and a 12 and a 13 <laughs> man. yeah about the third game all we gonna talk about b jones and his bowling in just a second but hey avery are you ready for the sports life talk initiation i am ready kevin treat it like a 16 pound ball let's go <laughs> 
You can't just say that and expect me to jump right into it. Okay. So to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. So my first one would be K Camp, then Tory Lanez, August Alsina, Chris Brown, and Juice with me. Oh, she brought that K Camp. Keep it 100, baby. Hey, that hey, K Camp go so hard. Hey, thank you. K Camp has finally made SLT show. Camp, do you listen to K Camp Camp? This is the second time somebody said that though, B. Jones. Oh, had it? Yeah, yeah. Did I, I, go, I, did I go crazy like that last time when they said uh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As soon as she said it, I was like, just wait. He's about to blow up. <laughs> hey, KK, oh my God. I mean, I listened to the one that you suggested that I listen to. We'll talk about he that. He got some new bangers. He got some new bangers out too, though. Yeah, she, said, uh, she said August too, and August goes hard too. And yeah. he's from Louisiana as well. Keep it thing rolling, well, baby. Well, you know what? We're going to move right along. I won't talk about any more of our top five. But if you do like our top five like we do, leave us a comment. All right, so who are your favorite sports teams? I would have to say the Chicago Bandits, which is a national uh, fast pitch softball team. Ooh. Like, how do you get to watch them play? Are they, like, televised? Yeah. Okay. It's Chicago Bandits. That's what's up. I know that's the only team you're rocking with? Yeah, I wish I could say I was more heavily in like football and basketball, but how long how long you been down there in, in, in Ruston? Um, I came down there in September last year. So it's my first okay. year being there. And you went through a whole football season and you ain't been watching no football in Louisiana. That's all we do. That's all we've, we got. We've been gone a lot. Okay. You've been traveling. You've been on the road. All right. All right, so we're a little slide on that will be Joe. All right, so who is your favorite superhero and why? I would have to say Black Panther. And that's just because, well, when I saw the movie, just how it was made was very beautiful to me. But what he stands for just means a lot to me. That's a great answer. And for those of you who are watching this, even though this show will be aired by then, coming up this Wednesday, we're actually going to honor Mr. Chadwick Boseman. That's so, absolutely right. I wish we could have got this out earlier. We know this be an answer, but you know what? All right, mm-hmm. right T'Challa, since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? That's a really good question. I don't know why Big Rings comes in my head by Drake so much, but probably that. Just for who Chadwick Boseman was as a person. Personally, what he made the superhero out to be he was like that for a lot of people and he did a lot of amazing things in his life. And like I said, even though we're going to honor him this Wednesday, I do have to ask you this before I turn it over to UB Jones. All right. Do you think that his part of T'Challa should be recasted? No, I don't feel like anybody could fill those shoes. They were way too big of shoes to fill and they left too big of a mark on just Ooh. Marvel for Marvel fans and just who he was as a person. It it would be really hard, but I, I personally don't think they should be recasted. Now, how old are you, Avery? 22. Ooh, hey, cuz she ahead of her time, KT. That answer was I'm I'm, I'm excited for the rest of this show, cuz she 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 nasty with it. I'm she excited. Polished. Too, but I'm also we're gonna talk about this off air because yeah, <laughs> like I said, this is your show. <laughs> it's all about you. All right, B. Jones, I think it's safe to say that Miss Avery Brown is in the family. So go ahead and take it away, man. Kevin, she in the family, but me and her was actually kid folks the moment that she set foot off that Red River and came to Louisiana. But I'm, I'm going to need you to put your L's up, Kevin. Before we go any further, I'm going to need you to throw an L up right now for the state of Louisiana. Can you do it, sir? No, I can't. I'm sorry. Oh, that's sad, man. <laughs> no. That's sad. Oh, my goodness. The hate runs deep in no, Dallas. No, look, look here, B. Jones. We already went to a basketball game where that college team beat my college team, and I had to throw up their sign. I can't uh, keep doing that, man. All right, man. Well, shame on you. But let's take this thing. Before we talk about how you got to Louisiana, let's go back to Columbus. Because you came up in Columbus, and I was checking you out. You played a couple of different sports. Tell us a little bit about growing up out there in C-Town. So, growing up out there... Um, we all know I bowl. I started bowling when I was two. Um, I played softball. I started that when I was four. And I played travel ball from the time I was 12 all the way till I was 18. And I continued to bowl all the way through high school. Um, softball in high school, we actually won two city championships. So that was pretty nice. But 
Oh, and I also played volleyball in middle school, but my mom wouldn't let me keep playing because she didn't want me to get hurt. <laughs> Well, so so I saw something on it that said you wore like the 2000 and I want to say it was 2017 golf 2015 2016 golf it was something like golf classic or something like that did you play golf as well no I didn't so okay I just, it might have been called the golf classic or something like that because your accolades I got I got I got dizzy reading them I mean it was like it was like 25 to 30 I was like Lord there's no way I'm better than all of these for the show but you was killing it in high school I tried to I I tried to do most I could when I was able to because I knew once I got to college it was just going to be whatever sport I chose and that's all I was going to have time for. So, so let me tell y'all something. Let me let me get to the B. Jones story real quick, because I, I took I, like I can't everybody come up playing get bowling on the weekends, right? You you in high school, you that's what we used to do. We used to go to the bowling alley to mess with the girls and everything. That's in Shreveport. I mean, it's not a whole bunch to do if, unless you you know chitty chitty bang bang. You know what I mean? So so I used to play. I was actually a pretty decent bowler. I mean, my my, my now Kevin gonna probably tell y'all some scores that's ridiculous, but I mean, I, I would go in there and I would be impressive with, with a 160, 175. And when you play against amateurs. They, you can win with those types of numbers. You know what I'm saying? Everybody like, hey, he, he the best bowler. But I, I never put my hand, my, my thumb in the ball because every time I put my thumb in the ball, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. So I picked up a lighter ball. I would put these two fingers in the ball and I would put it in my palm and I would let it sit and I would throw it out with a little hook and that thing go. Whoop. And everybody be like, man, you can, you can bowl. So I go to college. I go to ULM the first semester and they like, hey, you got, you got to pick up one more class in order to maintain your tops program. So I, in order to get my tops, I was like, man, I don't, I do not want another hard class. And guess what they had on the on the uh, bowling? So I took bowling and I go into bowling in day one, and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna for the throw the ball. I'm ready to go. This is gonna be a bird class. No, 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 no. The first thing they do, you got to the whole first day. We did nothing but lunges, and anybody who know what lunges are, we literally had to sit up there and just keep dropping down our knee over and over again. And the coach, the, the coach would come through like straighten your back, straighten your back, straighten your back, get your knee, get your form. And by, it was like three days before we actually even got to throw the ball down the lane. So I just want to let y'all know, don't take collegiate bowling class. It ain't no joke it ain't no joke but uh but tell us now so so you was bowling at the age of two i mean so you 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 were natural with this just off off the cuff yeah my mom and dad both bowled and it ran in the family and my dad was like oh we're definitely putting her in bowling so of course there i was at the bowling alley two years old didn't want no bumpers (laughs) didn't want no help (laughs) and that's just where it started from there when did you get your first like strike? When when was the first recollection of hitting a strike, and that feeling, them goosebumps rising up on your arm, the hairs on your neck standing up, and you knew like this is an incredible feeling. Probably, probably six. I don't remember that far back, but I would yeah. say probably by the time I was six, I might have had a strike or two. Dang, six years old getting strikes—that's crazy. That is absolutely correct. All right. So so now you were, you were like I told you, you had tons of accolades in high school. Yeah, I, 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 When they say you were nominated and you didn't win like state player of the year, I was like, that's crazy. I don't know. Show me the person that's better than Avery Brown and I want to shake your hand. But then you, you actually chose Arkansas State uh, to attend college. So you went a long way from home. What was that decision like? Um, it was a really hard decision. I talked to a lot of different schools. Um, really tried to get a feel. Since you only get five official visits, then you can't really travel everywhere. So it was more so about who am I going to get the best education from and where am I going to go that I know I can have a shot at my dream, which was to win a national championship. And me and the coach started talking, fell in love with the school, fell in love with the girls that was on the team. And as soon as I got there, I was like, I think this is home. Really? Arkansas State. You know, it ain't a lot to do in Arkansas State, is it? Can no. go to Walmart, huh? Yeah, but Memphis is an hour away, so. Oh, y'all was in Memphis? Yeah. We uh, I ain't going to go to Memphis to see your pitch on the walls. Ever. Hey, you out there wild. No. All right, all right. So, so uh, before we get into bowling, you went to Arkansas State. Now, when did you choose the number 20? Um, I chose number 20 because my teammate Lindsay is 22, and that's both our favorite number, and she was there before me. So okay. I just got the number that was closest to it that was left. What 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 was your number at uh, at Arkansas State? Twenty two. Okay, so you've been winning. So what? Why is twenty two important? Why is that your favorite number? Um, that was my dad's number for softball. So I've always worn it all the way through softball, all the way through bowling. Okay. All right. That's pretty dope. All right. So now you at a state. 
and I didn't even shame on me because I'm I call myself a sports savant, but I did not know this thing even existed. But you played and competed in the national championship, and the highlight that I saw of you in the national championship was crazy. You got that strike. I felt I was like ah. Hey, I was kind of a fan for a second when that strike went down. I said, <laughs> she hit that thing. I mean, it felt good coming out, too. The ball was rolling. We were, ah. And uh, you guys had a lead at the time. And then I saw y'all came in uh, second place in the championship. So tell us about that amazing journey to even compete on that kind of stage. Um, it was very nerve-wracking. Um, we competed in the match that you saw um, against McKendry in order to go. But we had went undefeated the entire tournament until we met Nebraska in the semifinal and then we lost to Nebraska and we had to be McKendry to get there and as soon as we knew we had won that match it was just a flood of emotions it's like okay after three years we finally got here like I'm finally gonna have my chance to get that ring hold that trophy you know cry with my girls and we just needed to treat it like any other match. Just take it one shot at a time, talk to each other, communicate, do everything we had done up to that point the same exact way. Now, now explain us real quickly here, because uh, I only got about four minutes and I still got some more stuff I want to talk about. Explain us real quickly here how these rules work. Because we watch it on television. We see you switch lanes. We know it's a team game. When I go play bowling, <laughs> I rent a lane, $25. I rent my shoes. I get that one lane for, you know, an hour, two hours. And that's what we do. We take turns. We bowl. But when you bowl on a team and in these competitions, it's not the same. It's not the same game. Is that correct? Right. Tell, tell us a little bit about the differences from amateur bowling on a Saturday night to when you guys are really, truly getting competitive. So just for a rundown of the tournament. So like on Fridays, for instance, we bowl Bakers and you have five people who bowl one game on one lane. So you don't switch. You just stay on that lane until your game's finished. And then after that, you switch. And then on Saturdays, you have the same five people or five different people bowl one full game against another team. And then you switch back and forth. And then Sunday, you have best four or seven. So you bowl four Baker games. And whoever wins those four first wins that match. But the number one thing to remember is just pay attention to the person beside you. Because if you go at the same time, those professionals, they, they're not too nice about it. Really? <laughs> no. Yeah, you gotta, that's a courtesy thing in bowling. Yeah. I, I got into it with somebody over that. Yeah. I got into it with somebody, and when I tell you, I, I swear he was Cappy Martin or somebody. I don't know who he was. He was hey, bad, but you know, I ain't, ain't going to digress with that story. All right, so, but it's, it's definitely some technical things that go into it, and there's some teamwork and some camaraderie that helps excel you when you guys play at that national, at that high level. Right. Okay, okay. So now, you go, you national 2021 run-ups, and then something changes, you get a spiritual feeling. You get something in your bones that tell you, I got to make a change. Yeah. You put your name in the transfer portal. And I, I read I read your, your message to the fans and everybody. And I, I felt that was truly heartfelt. Like, you were like, hey, I love Arkansas State. But I got to take my next step in my life. And so why Louisiana Tech? Um, it was almost the same feeling I got my freshman year. I had talked to Coach. I had knew some of the girls that were already on the team. And I had went down there one weekend and we just gelled. It was like we I had been on the team for the past three years and they just welcomed me in just like I was a part of the family. And he told me, you know, I know what you're capable of. You're going to get a chance here. And as soon as he said that, I was like, OK, I'm sold. Let's let's do it. But there were some other schools like NCAT had talked to me, Kim Sorrell and her husband. They're great coaches. I had talked to them as well. Um, Vanderbilt, all those coaches, but Louisiana Tech was the one. And, and when you say Vanderbilt, you could have went to Vanderbilt because you like an all conference, uh, academic all American, or academic all conference. You're pretty sharp with it, and I'm pretty sure the nation has saw that already. So, with my last minute, my last minute. Let's talk about that. I, oh, I almost said the elephant, KT. <laughs> I was going to have Zetas coming from left and right on me. Let's talk about the Zeta in the room. You made that decision. What was that, 2019 to yes. become part of Zeta Phi Beta? Tell us a little bit about that journey and, and, and your sorority, your sorrow. So coming to college, I had known I always wanted to be Greek. 
I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to be, but I needed to fill out for myself who was going to best fit me and where I was going to thrive the best. So I went to Greek events, talked to some Greeks. My teammate was actually a Zeta. Her name was Denicia Waller. She was a Zeta and she was one of the most down to earth people I had ever met. And I was like, okay, I think I want to be a Zeta. And my one of the basketball coaches in high school was a Zeta too. She's a Zeta as well. And I was like, yeah, I think this is one for me. So across fall 19, I had a new chapter, Arkansas State. And after that, it was just, I finally had my sisters, people that would ride for me as much as I would ride for them. Um, the next year, I became president of the chapter, took that on. And that was hard, but it, it was pretty fun too. Planning events, seeing the girls, you know, having that time to be with them and just making a name for IOTA New on campus. All right. So what is something that bowling has taught you that you can use when you're not on the lanes? Perseverance, for sure. Um, there's going to be days when it's going to be super hard. You're just going to want to quit, just pack up and leave. But you can't because you don't know what could happen if you did leave. Who knows who says you can't come back and win the competition? And there have been plenty of times when that has happened to me and I just had to stick it out. Okay, so this is a part of the show where I'm going to get in your business business, okay? Okay. All right, B. Jones mentioned earlier, you know, you go on a Saturday night trying to go to the bowling ring, you know, try to holler at some you know, ladies or whatever, but not saying that you holler at ladies, but just follow me on this one. Is there someone right now currently in your life that, you know, you don't mind going and, and bowling with? My boyfriend. <laughs> Okay. Hey, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yes, exactly. Your boyfriend. So tell us a little bit about how y'all met. Um, we went my freshman year of college, actually. And we kind of went our separate ways. And we didn't talk for two years. And we reconnected last year. And we started dating again. Can he bowl? Yeah, I was going to ask him that, too. <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey, can you teach him how to bowl though? Can you teach him a thing or two? Yeah, he picks up quick, but. Oh, okay, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he's going to watch this episode. So just have a good <laughs> meal ready for him. He's watching it. Just, yeah. just play it safe. All right, B. Jones. Well, oh, uh-uh, uh-uh, Kevin. No, 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 sir. We're not going to do this until off stage. You said, I'm going to tell, tell everybody my high game. We okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go. So, so I want to hear this number. I want to hear this impressive number that the great Kevin, KT, the head coach, he going to give them the nation. Let's go. Said, every, my government name and everything. I'm the head coach on the show, B. Jones. Stop playing. Okay, so this is a one time thing that happened. I got high. I normally bowl in the 170s, 180s. I hit the 210. That's the highest I've ever done. That's pretty good, man. How many strikes yeah. did you get in a row, Kevin? I got six in a row. And when that thing had like a six bag up there, I was, I was going, I ain't going to lie. Truth be told, ladies and gentlemen, if, you, if you've if ever had a good run in bowling, it is probably the most nerve-wracking feeling you've ever got. Let me tell you something. When I got the turkey, at that point I got the turkey, I was like, I'm feeling special right now. I went and sat back down. And y'all got to remember, this is glowing, everything glowing. They got Cotton Eye Joe in the back. Cotton Eye Joe, the whole back. Everybody dancing. And I'm, I'm sitting at the back of the back of the thing. I'm like, don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to nobody. Just let me do my thing. I'm sitting there back. And like, it's your turn. I'm going up, rolling again. Full back. Boom. I'm just like, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. So how many how many strikes did you get, KT? I would be lying if I told you how many I got in a row. So I'm not even going to do that. I, I, don't, okay. I don't remember. I don't remember. I got a six bag of before, though. Hey, well, we got to go bowling, man. Right? Yeah, we got to. I'm, I'm trash now. I ain't played in like yeah, 15 I ain't played years. in like three years. So, yeah. What, what about you? What about you, Avery? What's the most strikes you got in a row? And your high game? 11. Ooh, that's almost a perfect game. I've had two 299s. Shut your mouth. Yeah, both 10 pins, left pocket 10 pins. Oh, you left the one pin you left up on both games was the pocket 10 pin. Mm hmm. Avery, we gonna go hustle. We finna go hustle some folks down at the. <laughs> we are gonna let them win like the first game or two. Then we gonna be like, hey, how about uh, Sports Life Talk versus your little crew over here, and we take y'all off for some bread. <laughs> hey, that's, a, that's a nice little hustle, BJ. Hey, okay, we might need to do like a SLT bowling classic, man. Let's go, man. Hey, let's do it. But before we go to doing the classic with me and you on the team, right now we got to do some other business, sir. Let go. 
Avery Brown. Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with Kevin and I. We go and comp- compete with each other, and you get to call all the shots. Now, have you ever played a game called Would You Rather? Yes. All right, so the rules are extraordinarily simple. Both hosts will present to you an option. You select that option. The host that you select will gain a point. The first host to two points, or the best out of three, will win this episode's Game of Championship rounds. For those of you who are out there watching, Kevin is up right now 16, I think, to 12. Kevin, is 16 yes. to 12? Yes, yeah, 16 to 12. So 16 to 12. I won the last game, nope. So I'm feeling the... Uh, I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling myself. All right. Here we go. Avery Brown. Round number one. Would you rather for everyone to have access to your internet history or have everyone you know be able to read your thoughts? Probably internet history. Yes. And the crowd goes round. Goes wild. (laughs) Round one goes See, Kevin, everybody ain't looking up filth like you, man. Dude, B. Jones, just, just erase my history. If I go down, come over here, erase every computer I got, please. Burn, burn notice. All right, yes. round number two. Would you rather play your sports idol in his or her prime, which means the best bowler at them at their prime, or would you rather meet your childhood sports bowling idol today? My childhood sports idol today. So, get a little excited for that one, B. Jones. And, you know, you know, you know it's all about round one. You went, okay. Who's the best bowler? Who the best bowler of all time, Avery? Uh, right now, it's Jason Belmonte, but back, it might have been Norm Duke or Pete Weber. I remember Pete. Norm Duke. Do you I remember, remember Pete Weber? I remember Pete, too. He got a whole little thing of bowling balls sitting at the front when you go in. He got like a little rack that you you selling products. I liked him. Them some yeah, big names. Whoever acts a fool on the lane too. That, that's yeah, yeah. He, he hey, after he get a strike and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So round three. Round number three, and this is the one we always know how this go. I'm I'm, I'm hoping you are unique, as you say. Would you rather go into the hey, field? My hey, bad. My bad. My hey, bad. Hey, my bad. Man, you got a little too excited. You jumped the gun. It's okay, brother. <laughs> All right. Would you rather? Go into the past and meet your ancestors to see where you came from or go into the future and get to meet your great, 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 great grandchildren and see the legacy that you left behind. Hmm. Probably my ancestors. That's the game. Yeah. Okay. So, Avery, do you watch boxing or wrestling by chance? I have. Okay. So, you know about them having championship belts, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm no different. Avery, why, why are your ancestors? I'm just curious. Because you got you you about to be a trailblazer. You're, the, you're doing something that a lot of people not doing. You're going to be able to look back at your life after you go on and, and say, man, I, I set up so many people. Look what I accomplished in my lifestyle. But you'd rather go back and meet some people who didn't even bowl. <laughs> they couldn't bowl. Yeah. Somebody in their feelings. So, yeah, I'm in my feelings, man. So tell me why, Avery, before I let you off the hook. Um, for me, what I took that question as is I want to know what makes me, like where I came from, my background, because just culturally, I see a lot of people who know who they are. Like they're able to celebrate these holidays and learn different languages. And that's something I've always wanted to know. All right. I can dig that. All right. Kevin, once you win 15 games off of that question, we got to remove it, man. Because you, you well, here's the thing, I tried to switch it up one time and then the dude picked the answer. And then <laughs> you it, so. Nah. Yeah. Nah, we're going to change it out. We're going to change it. All right, Avery. The title of the show is called You Got Next. We know that this is this your last season. Is this is this it or you got two seasons? Because because COVID, they gave everybody an extra year, I know. Yeah. So I'm going to take my fifth year. OK, so you got this year and then you got next year. So yes. tell us, what does the future hold for you? Um, so hopefully go back to the national championship, win it this time, take it all. Um, after college, I'm either going to medical school or PA school. I want to be a sports medicine physician with a specialty in neurology or a physician's assistant with a specialty in neurology. I like that. So you want to try to help some people out with these concussions and some of these brain injuries. Yeah. Like after I saw the movie concussion, I was like, I think I really want to get into CTE. 
Ah, oh, that's pretty dope, man. We got a, hey, we got a sister out there that's gonna be doing some some big things as long as you don't mess with the NFL. All right, they stay away, they leave the NFL alone. Go after go after soccer or something. No, just, man, I like I like I like soccer too. So tell us a little bit about the season. When, when you sound like you before the show, you told us you are you've been traveling like crazy. Are, are y'all mid swing in the in the bowling season? Um, we're actually about to start postseason. So we have sectionals next week as soon as I get back, and then after that we have. Um, uh, USBC, which is another thing outside of NCAA, but we actually got ranked fifth in the country this past week. So what? Okay, so when you say hopefully we get to play for the national championship, you on a squad, you on a team that can make some noise right now. Yep. Ooh, is it any way? Is it any way SLT Nation can watch? Because I, I ain't gonna lie, I want to see it now. I want to see your bowl. I want to put a. I need the shirt you got on. Show everybody the Louisiana Tech shirt you got on. Cause that thing fresh. <laughs> I need that shirt so I can sit in front of my laptop and I can watch you bowl. So to when the next time you are gonna be live? Um, we should be live at sectionals. It's either gonna be on Facebook or Bowl TV. Okay, Bowl TV. I'm pretty sure we can find it Some, somewhere out there. I go to BowlTV.com. We're gonna find it. All right. So besides Instagram, which we have on the screen, where can people find you on social media? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Avery Brown 22, uh, Facebook, which is Avery Brown 22 for my fan page and on TikTok, which is the same thing. Avery Brown 22. And I want to say one thing real quick. We see the official. We got the glasses on. We got the we got the rock in our hand. You rocking your. Y'all go check out a, a beautifully unique or oh, you beautiful dot underscore unique and see the true Avery Brown because we got we got some some ebony type shots. She, 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 she got potential to go be a model. I'm just telling y'all, there's some heat on there for y'all, but a boyfriend in another room, just be careful. All right. <laughs> yeah, just stay at just stay at the visual. Don't slide in the DMs or nothing. Yeah. But you have any shout outs you want to give? Um, shout out to my mom and dad, of course, have to shout them out of uh, my team, Louisiana Tech, my sorority sisters, Fee and Rebecca, and my boyfriend, Jermaine, of course. Oh, see, she didn't say his name earlier. Now she said it. Yeah, she said it. <laughs> All right. So, Avery, this is a part of the show where you get a chance to call out the next person who should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same. With that said, Avery, who are you giving your game ball to? I think I would have to give it to probably Evangeline Harris at Arkansas State. She's a track. She's track and field. She's okay. She Evangeline is. Harris, you are on the clock. What'd you say? She just did some big things. She's actually my sorority sister. I brought her off after me. So okay. like, some big okay. things in track and field. And hey, she, she has a story remarkable. She got something she need to say? I think so. All right. We can't wait to get on Avery. Uh, Avery, you, though, you're smart. You're beautiful. You're talented. I mean, you got a smile that's going to shake up the world. And 568 career strikes. I know that number is going to grow now that you got two more years. Hey, you probably go. You probably going to be the thousand strikes, huh? Career, career numbers. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, no matter what, I hope if something happened to me, I get to have you looking at my brain because Avery Brown, you got next. And Kevin, before I move on, I'm, I'm going to do this. As far as the nominations go, Kevin and I are two men. We work hard. We try to get y'all the best stories. But if you know somebody out there who has next, if you know a remarkable story, go to Ask Sports Life Talk. Send us the page. Send us the bio. Tag them or whatever so you can help us to find the next uh, a superstar or the next person that story needs to be said but with that being said woo, kevin we can finally say we had a bowl on the show i, I I'm, 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 I'm thinking me and you need to go next friday night i think we need to set up something here in the dfw area Avery, how far are you from dfw you, you can make it out here one weekend can't you yeah i could actually when, when, when your season is over of course yeah. we know you we know you're traveling all the time yeah. we want you to come out here and be a part of the slt classic we're going we're going to throw us a, a little a little amateur classic and see what kevin see if he can hit that 210 again and listen yeah. if you did stick around i told y'all we got a lot of contests coming up the first one get you a hey, dress like the crew look like the crew we're giving out sports life talk t-shirts it's real simple to get it go to our ig page at sports life talk tag in five friends to the promotion of this episode let them know that jay you 
saw the episode and it's dope, share our story, share our journey, help us to keep growing the show. And then we will send you a free T-shirt. Just give us your size, your address, and all that good stuff and our DMs. We, we real interactive. We don't mind. I promise you. We ain't too big for our britches. We would love to talk to you and kick it up with you. The second contest is a major one. Now, this episode will be aired in March. So at the end of March, we will be giving away 250 bones. That's right. $250 gift card to a person that uh, is this, it's only a smaller thing you got to do. Like the episode, hit subscribe, share this episode with two people on YouTube and leave in the comments Y-E-E-T. That will let me and KT know. And then we will throw your name in the raffle. And on the last day of March, we will go live uh, on whatever our weekly show and we will then announce whoever that one is. So stay tuned. Do it. I'm telling you, it's free money. Not too many people doing it. So only a handful of names right now are doing it. And uh, you got that opportunity to earn you some free money. And uh, Kevin, yes, I see you wearing your belt. You look good. You're looking good with it, man. I just, I just hate it. I'm going to tell you something. It's going to feel real bad for me when I take that from you. Why? I, I don't even know. I'm a competitor. You win some, you lose some, and for you, you just been losing more than I have. <sighs> well, look, you Avery. lose some, you win some, long as the outcome is income. Now what? Yeah, you know, I already won season one. Avery, you never forget your first, and you were our first bowler on the show. So hey, thank you so much for rocking with us. Like B Jones said, go look at her Instagram page. Don't slide in the DMs because she got two brothers here in Dallas. <laughs> Depending on how big you are, we're gonna handle you. But thank you so much, Avery, for rocking with us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Avery, send me some negative meat pie. Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay blessed. Hey, take care of each other. Respect each other. Love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big because you never know whether you're a bowler, archer, tennis player. It don't matter. We will find you. And your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet. See what's crazy is I knew you had next Cause you always working You always grinding You're in your bag Cause you're always working Like in due time I just I knew you got next Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk, got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talking mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. 